Hey, Clatter TV Talk fans. It's a TV talk for TV people. Uh, how does Sinead say? <laughs> yeah, you're doing it great. I'm crushing yeah, it. Wait. I am TV talk crushing. for TV, TV fans. TV talk for TV fans. <laughs> TV fans. <laughs> the weekly show where we break down everything that was in the week in television. There it is. Something Emma like that. <laughs> did it. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the lady, the, the myth, the legend, uh, our lady in the water, Sneed to Freeze, is unavailable today. And so it is just myself, the one and only David Chrysanthemum Griffin. I'm here. I'm here. First. I'm ready. Emma. <laughs> the fiefdom fife. Hello. The queen of anime herself. <laughs> and me, Josh McCuga. We're here for the next hour. We're talking TV. There's a ton to talk about. Um, it's been an, an amazing week. Thank you guys for watching our pre-tape from last week yeah. for, uh, for 4th of July. And there's so much TV that we like. So much TV news happened mm -hmm. in between that pre-talk, the pre-tape, and the actual date like, of air. I feel like that happens to us every time. Because remember Memorial Day? Yeah. All of the like DC TV finales happened, and we didn't have a show that nothing. Monday. Yeah, nothing. We had two weeks to wait <laughs> and, on the finales. And the Game of Thrones trailer dropped. Yes. Like, no. it, was, mm -hmm. it was insane. Yes. Uh, so we have a lot to talk <laughs> about today, which is a ton of fun. And um, we, so this week which is pretty cool. The Emmy nominations come out yes. on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So I haven't really told Emma and David, but we are going to maybe do like an Instagram live video or maybe a Facebook live video at some point on Friday to just talk about who we thought got snubbed and who didn't and awesome. our reaction mm -hmm. to the Emmy thing since we'll all be here on Friday. Uh, you'll be here for Schmodown. I'm stuff. always here on Friday. Yes, <laughs> and you're always here on Friday for Movie Talk, correct? Hey, what will we talk this week? That's See? right. I almost <laughs> forgot. I forgot my own schedule. Look at me. Right. Just planning without, <laughs> yeah. planning without right. consequence. <laughs> um, before we get into it, guys, since no. Sinead is not here, uh, just throw your, throw your tweets at me, just at Josh McCuga, and um, we will read them at the end of the show. So don't even, I mean, you can hashtag him Clatter TV Talk. That helps the show and helps traction. But if you want to just get your tweet read, uh, you know, throw it just at Josh McCuga. We appreciate all your tweets. So let's get into it. Before we get onto the main sidebar there, right before air, we got some new Warriors casting, mm -hmm. which is Marvel's first scripted comedy series. Mm -hmm. Can we have Yeah, that, right? that's right. Now, the girl that's the lead as Squirrel Girl. That's going to be squirrel. really hard yeah, to squirrel. talk. Yep. Squirrel. Squirrel girl. Squirrel. Girl. Squirrel. Uh, squirrel. Hey, Cody, can we get a squirrel girl? Yeah, squirrel girl. Uh, cool, <laughs> cool. We, we that, that was good, Cody. That yeah. Um, is, is the playwright and the kind of stepped on second love interest for Kevin in This Is Us. Yes. yes. Also, I believe the girl from the AT&T AT commercial. Yeah, yeah. she is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, Milana. I yeah. actually did a sketch with her years oh, nice. ago because nice. we were both so young looking. We played high schoolers in it. And she and I were like <laughs> high school BFFs. And <laughs> the like main guy was in love with her. Yes. So it, nice. was a, it was a great time. Nice. Yeah, she's a, she's a really, she's a cool girl. I'm, I'm excited for her. Yeah, I think, and you know, we obviously we saw Powerless, which was a train wreck. Yes, it was. But I am looking forward to this. I hope it's good. Yeah. I mean, we have Squirrel Girl. Yeah. Uh, I, I I like the direction they're going with this. I, hopefully they don't. It's tough. Comedies are hard because I'm a comedy again. That's not my go-to genre, so I don't always yeah. get excited about a new comedy. But yeah. I think if they do this right, the characters are interesting enough. See, and it's something that hasn't been done before. I, I think was going to say, and it's, yeah. it's interesting for me because I do really gravitate towards comedy, okay. and so I'm more likely to watch a comedy that's outside of my sort of comfort zone sure. in terms mm. of the kind of stuff that I would normally be interested in, which contains, you know, like vampires and <laughs> magic and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, but. Yeah, so, but, so this is like within sort of the realm of stuff that I'm interested in, and it's a comedy. Obviously, with Powerless, we saw them fail, or Powers. I don't even remember what that show's called. Which the, Powers, the NBC Powerless. one. Powerless. Powerless. Well, okay. because yeah. it was... It, what, no, I Powers pitched, is that PlayStation show. Yes, yes. Yeah. Powers. <laughs> yeah, which is based off a comic book. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so Michael it's all, it's all in the same yeah. realm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I didn't like about Powerless... I pit, I wrote a sketch probably like ten years ago, right? Where a guy was like he was an insurance agent, and all he did was like, I mean, it's under the Avengers clause. Call me back, and he was just like sitting in his office, right. doing the things, which I thought would have been a really cool thing for Powerless, right? Absolutely, and that's what I thought it was going to be. And they were talking about like a Marvel thing that they were doing it somewhere in that that mm -hmm. wheelhouse, but Powerless was definitely not that. And I know right. there was an unaired episode with Adam West mm -hmm. that then they aired on the, the on stream their YouTube channel. Yeah, they changed the, the concept channel. of Powerless because remember it was supposed to be about there's supposed to be like insurance. Insurance got people yeah. that would help you, you know, if a superhero wrecked your car or something like that. But right. then they changed and it. And that's hilarious. Yeah, that would be and, great. And so, yeah. you know, I, I hope that with New Warriors, we do get a successful superhero comedy because mm -hmm. I think there is 
a lot of comedy in there. If Look you at play, I was gonna say, if you play it with a certain amount of self awareness yeah. of like, guys, this is a little ridiculous. Yeah. Like trying to balance like being a hero with living a regular life. Like that's that can be really funny. No, mm -hmm. I agree. And I don't know the other the other main that they're they're touting in the headline from from uh, Hollywood Reporters is Derek Thaler. I didn't watch Baby Daddy. Has anybody watched Baby Daddy? Uh, mm -hmm. nope. Adam Cody, Baby nope. Daddy, Baby Daddy. That's a okay, negative. Okay, we got a nope. we got a nope. thumbs He's, down. Don't know if that means he didn't like it or didn't <laughs> or he watch didn't. it. <laughs> He's got a real brooding a real brooding look to him. Uh, some solid scruff there. Mm -hmm. Kind of looks like a Scott Eastwood type. Right. So uh, you know, uh, good for Without new warriors. Without the name recognition. Yeah, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Let's, we'll I'm say that. Sure. We're gonna, we're gonna check put it, it on the anticipated. We'll be list. reviewing it. Do you think they'll have like maybe like a pop up Comic Con thing where they Ooh. might jump in? Yeah. into like a free form day somewhere. We may do some we improv, may see. maybe. Yeah. yeah, just do a little improv. Maybe Emma jumps on there. <laughs> yeah. They reenact their sketch from way back. Right, when. be like the, the girl from the AT and T commercials would be there. She'd be like, Oh, yeah, Emma. exactly. I haven't seen you in a long time. I girl. know. How do yeah. we pronounce her last name, uh, Emma? Van Trub. Van right? Trub. Vine, Vine Trub. Vine Trub. Vine Milana Vine Trub. Thank She's you. She's very good Adam. in those AT&T uh -huh. commercials. She's good. This is us. I and, liked her. I yeah, like and my buddy too. is her personal trainer, which is pretty funny. Oh, nice. Wow. There you go. All right. Uh, next story. It's the first one there on your sidebar. I'm not as good as introducing stories as Sinead is, mostly mm. because uh, it's not really what I'm good <laughs> at doing. Uh, Michael Mann and uh, producer Michael DeLuca are bringing a, a show called Hugh 1968, which is about a siege in the Vietnam War, which is a turning point for the American operations there in that conflict. It's a 10-episode limited series. It's going to FX. It's the first time that M FX is doing something that isn't in the Ryan Murphy wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally think that this is... Uh, we don't see much Vietnam stuff no. on yes. TV, mm -hmm. right? Agreed. MASH was the Korean War. Yep. Mm -hmm. we've, seen, we've seen Bay and the Brothers. We've seen The Pacific, both at HBO and both 10-episode you know, mini series or was Banner Brothers? Banner Brothers, Banner Brothers was, was ten. Ten, yeah, right? Ten, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So seeing something Vietnam War related, I think because our generation was the first post Vietnam War generation. You know, like mm -hmm. my dad was in the draft, and all of his friends were in the draft. I'm, I'm draft, I'm sure your parents like were lived at that time. Right. So our generation doesn't know a, a ton about it just because we didn't live in the news, we didn't live in anything. So maybe for our parents, this might be treading over old water. But for us, I think it's pretty fantastic because. What we have platoon, we have apocalypse now, but there isn't a ton of Vietnam right. War television. And they're dark. I mean, apocalypse yeah. now, those stories because with World War II, World War II, of course, is dark. Any big war conflict where millions of people die and thousands of people die is horrific. But with World War II, it's celebrated a little bit more. Not the death of everybody, but it's celebrated because you know we, the Axis powers came together, Allied yeah. powers, sorry, came together and and they beat Hitler, they right. beat the Nazis, they beat the bad guys. Well, there was a battle. I, I there was a battle. That, Vietnam I think that is that's so different. Exactly what it is is that you know obviously it's war, it's messy, it's not this clear cut. Mm. But from the point of view of people who have now survived through it, if you look at something like World War II or even World War One, you're mm. going, oh, there is a clear quote unquote bad guy mm -hmm. there, right. and that simply wasn't the case with Vietnam. Right, yeah. and we haven't really had a war. We, we got, since I mean, we had a, the like show that. on Cinemax, but the guy was just coming back from Vietnam, yeah. and he had some demons. Quarry yeah, on Corey Cinemax, great, and he yeah. had some demons. Like you could see some flashbacks. There's something that happened at some town that he did that he was just reminiscing about, and just as like horror, you know. So we and this knew, past yeah. week on uh, I'm dying up here, which uh, oh. I, I didn't put in highs and lows this mm -hmm. week, but. I personally think it's one of the better shows Showtime has put out in a while. You stuck with it. Uh, yeah, and I think it's mostly because it there's nothing really super funny about the show. Mm -hmm. There's some funny moments, but it's more about the struggle of the stand-up comedian, obviously like close to my heart. But there is a Vietnam uh, kind of storyline in the last episode with Eric Griffin from Workaholics, very funny stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. And that, again, another kind of lost generation. So... And, and this guy, Mark Bowden, who direct, who wrote the book for Black Hawk Down, he wrote the book for Hugh 1968, yeah. which is what this show is based on. And let's talk right. about his Michael Mann, too. Yeah. The last time that I remember Michael Mann being in television, we did a show called Luck uh, on, on HBO. I think he did it along with David Milch, yep. you know, and it, it was fantastic. It was very well done. Michael Mann's yeah. a great storyteller. Collateral is one of my favorite films the last 10 or 15 years. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited that and he's coming back Luck to was television. cut short, mostly, mostly it was, because yeah. horses kept on. Yeah. 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 And I totally, I, I totally think that FX does interesting stuff with actual historical stories. Yeah. So I think that it'll, I, I think FX is a place that's going to present it in a way that's going to make you think. This is a 
<laughs> this is a gritty tale. Yeah. They're not going to pull any punches. FX like HBO now when they, they do something. I, I look, you know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next up here on Collider TV Talk, guys, and I'm treating it like Sports Center. Cody, <laughs> how do you feel about <laughs> it? How am I doing thus far? <laughs> Cody's had a long day so far, so he's back there just pressing buttons, kind of like one of those birds in the Simpsons. He's remember responding. The, he just the, gave a thumbs up. The bird he's episode. Still do you guys alive. remember the bird episode? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Ava DuVernay, who did th uh, 13th, which I thought was an I mean, she got nominated for an Oscar for that. Queen Sugar. Uh, Queen Sugar. And she's doing Queen Sugar. My mom likes that show. Mom, Mrs. Griffin likes Mrs. that Griffin, show. Mrs. Griffin, big fan. She's a big fan of Queen Sugar. Yeah. Did we do a pilot review for we Queen Sugar? We did do a pilot review of Queen yeah, Sugar. I Not for me. No, it wasn't my When speed. that woman yeah. came out and started yelling at her man playing basketball, like, I know you didn't see. You know, I was like, yeah. all right, it's not for me. It's <laughs> yeah, like, right, it wasn't yeah. my speed. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but the she's doing a, a documentary on Central Park Five, which I did a. I knew, I kind of like followed a lot of the news around that. There's something about true crime and wrongly committed, sort of like Night Of, mm -hmm. right? Which was bit, not based on true events, but this docu-series, five parts at Netflix, another Netflix doc for DuVernay. An awesome, an amazing, not awesome, it's an amazing story of just terrible use of the American justice, justice system. Uh, I think, you know, this is one of those things. Can you, as a five-part docu-series, because obviously OJ Made in America was nominated for all kinds of stuff. As a five-part docu-series, I don't even know, Do you can you get nominated for an Oscar for that, or is that TV? I think when you do multiple parts, like OJ, it's going to be an Emmy. Of course, she was nominated for 13th. Right. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, in the film category, documentary, but I think it's going to just be a television yeah. nomination because of the five parts. What do you guys think about this? I mean, I... It, again, I think we're dealing with something that is going to be like rough yeah. to watch, but I, I'm definitely interested in it because yeah. I, I agree with you. It's like the abuse of the American justice system yeah. is fascinating. Yeah. Uh, and my roommate watches documentaries like this all the time, and I know that she will be all over this. Yeah. So sometimes these get really exhausting to me because it's yeah. like we can't. We just some just a lot of the people that are in power as far as. Some uh, police, some are amazing people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's then, true. You know, some are just. Well, it's tough when you see any of these like cases, no matter if you go from the extreme, like you watch something like Schindler's List, you watch 12 Years a Slave. It's not something you want to watch every night. Right. You don't usually be like, after 12 Years a Slave, man, I can't wait until that Blu ray comes out so I can rewatch that movie, boy. <laughs> Woo, that's great. Because, but it, it's hard to watch, but I think right. they're yeah. important to see. I think you should, if you're interested in something David Duvernay has done recently, check out 13th, the documentary. Right. It's very powerful. Maybe if this comes out a little bit after that. Maybe don't watch them back to back. Yeah. <laughs> Might be a little bit over, yeah. you know, a little too much. I was going to say, it's worth checking watch out. Watch this and then rewatch the Glow documentary and right. just feel yeah, happy watch about it. Right. Oh, yeah, you got to have a balance. You know, you, yeah, you got to have a balance there. Glow still well, Watch uh, <laughs> Chef's Table. I just oh, watch Chef's Table. Watch Chef's Table. Yeah, watch Chef's Table. Yeah, Chef's Table. It's good. It's really good. Final piece of news before we get into a little bit of TV is that Sons of Anarchy spinoff, which the Mayans, the Mayans MC, because you were a Sons fan. You yeah, I like Sons, but I mean, I didn't. And I like those guys, but like, I don't know if I like it enough to go back and watch a whole That's series on the Mayans. I'm like, I think I'm done with the Sons of Anarchy. I've had enough of Sons of See, Anarchy. See, here's the thing. When they, we were first talking about it, and Emma, I don't know if you were on the show when this was first announced. We first started talking about it. I was like, all right, I love it. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, I think we had a beautiful series in <laughs> Sons of Anarchy. And the Mayans, did you watch Sons? Were you no, a Sons fan? I, okay. Yeah, I've never watched Sons of Anarchy. I, and I think that it's sort of like you're saying, David, about like, I think I'm kind of done. I think for me, it's like, if I'd gotten on board with Sons of Anarchy when it first aired, I probably would have enjoyed it. But I just, it's not one of those things that I'm like dying to go back and watch. Mm -hmm. No, I'm with you on that too. And I think, um, <laughs> you know, the Mayans were a really big part of Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, for sure. That it was like, we saw their story. Yeah. I don't need to yeah. see a whole nother thing where mm -hmm. guys are, instead of guns, maybe they're running drugs right. or they're doing some kind of cartel business. Again, I think, I think we've seen it. I think it was done really, really well, mm -hmm. and I don't know if we necessarily need another one. So the fact it's, that they're doing recasting and reshooting of a pilot, there's obviously people going... I I feel like, and, the same thing. and like yeah. people might give me crap for this, but I feel like it's as if you were doing like a Game of Thrones spinoff that was about like just Jamie Lannister. And yeah. you're like, but but he has such great character yeah. growth within the series. Like <laughs> yeah. we've seen his story. He's one of the main characters. 100%. Like I don't, it's tough I don't to need do, more. Right. I mean, one show has done it well. Surprisingly, it's Better Call Saul. Yeah. Exactly. Because a lot yeah. of times some characters are so good because they're underused. You don't yes. want too much of them. Like Tyrion's great. I don't know if I need a whole spin-off with Tyrion Lannister. Like right. maybe just him and his little parts there. It's just yeah. you don't want to do too much. It, it, it falls right. into that uh, spin-off disaster yeah. kind of area. Kramer, Norm, uh, you know, uh, 
Better Call Saul being like those one of those lone yeah. outliers. Fraser, Fraser being a lone yeah. outlier. No, Better Call but Saul does such a good job of it didn't make better. Saul is the main character, but yeah. the the cast, supporting cast, is just outstanding. Yeah, that yeah. Makes a whole show, cast. Yeah. Right. yeah, and I think I think that's why Frasier's so successful as well, is because again, mm, it's right. like you have a spinoff with a character who people loved from the original series, and then you just yeah. support them with other yeah. awesome actors. It's not like they're still going like, you know who I miss, Norm. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, it's right. not it's like not they're like, just like reminiscing mm-hmm. about Cheers the whole yeah. time. <laughs> right, right. Because uh, we were watching. Did you guys see Spider Man yet? Did you see Spider Man? I'm going tonight. I was in the woods all weekend oh, that's <laughs> with right. literally no cell phone service. So uh, no, our I boy have not Nacho seen it from Better Call Saul is in. Oh, he's a great oh, actor. Yeah, he's awesome. an, he's more, he, was, he was an orphan black too. Yeah, yeah, he was I like awesome him. in orphan black. Mm-hmm. All right. That's our first three new... Is this how we do this? I can't... Yep. Without Sinead those here, are no way. Yep, those Transition. are our new stories. I'm crushing it here today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have to work on this. Um, we have a big announcement next Monday. We're gonna talk about some Comic-Con stuff, obviously, next Monday, a little Comic-Con preview. The day after... Because we're all leaving. Yes, because yeah, we're all leaving. We're all, all leaving. Of us. If you're in San Diego, make sure to look out for us. Say yes. hi. If, yeah. you're, if you're going to Comic-Con, we will be there. Yes. If we look like we're a little upset, angry, sweaty, or stink, <laughs> it's because we've been working nonstop, and that and we are. And, and that's, yeah. and that's right. the situation. Um, we're going to announce some really cool stuff next Monday, do a Comic-Con preview. And then the Monday after Comic-Con may be the most lethargic TV talk <laughs> you will ever watch. If we're all healthy and conscious and coherent, <laughs> we'll be here. I know Adam and Cody are psyched to be here as well. They're pumped. Everybody's pumped. The Game of Thrones that night. I know. Game of Thrones. I am coming home so fast from Comic-Con just so I can be on the comfort of my couch sipping on a martini or something, <laughs> celebrating the end of Comic-Con. Is that a good man to do over there? You guys sip martinis while no. you watch We have like <laughs> nine martini glasses that are just collecting dust. It's just, <laughs> it's just glassware collecting dust. Uh, uh, but yeah, so next Monday, make sure you guys tune in to Collider TV Talk. And today... One day only for nineteen ninety five. You get two TV talks for the price of one. No, uh, again, tweet at me at Josh McCougar. We're going to read some Twitter questions at the end. Let's talk preacher. First oh, of all, yeah. we're all going to be at the preacher panel at Comic Con. So stay in that thing. Perfect. This this preacher episode was so weird because hmm. New Orleans is kind of a weird place. It is. Right? You've been to New Orleans. You know, no, I've actually never been never to been New, New Orleans. Orleans. Yeah, you've been to New Orleans. No, I mean, you know, you know my dad took Mrs. Griffin. To a cooking class for one of the anniversary trips. Whoa! In New yeah. Orleans. In New Orleans, yeah, oh, they Cajun went down cooking? to yeah, they learned how oh, to wow. yeah, cook. Yeah, Creole and Cajun. Dang, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. gentlemen, if you're out there and you want to be romantic like uh, Mr. Griffin, Doctor Griffin. Yeah, Doctor Griffin. Doctor, yeah. Doctor yeah. David Anthony. No, Doctor Edward Griffin. Doctor oh, Edward. Yeah. Edward. Yeah. Griffin. yeah. I'm, Edward, I'm not a junior. No junior. <laughs> I'm not junior. As many times as I call you a junior on this show. <laughs> I'm not junior. Uh, Dr. Edward Griffin, he is a romantic. He takes his lady mm. to New Orleans. He takes a cooking class. That's how you stay married. Well, they don't say, they don't say in creepy old houses like they do in Preacher. No, yeah. it's a nice creepy. hotel. Yeah. So what is the deal with that dude in that house? He's not happy. Oh, Dennis. Yeah. I, it, it's it, Denny. Was, I mean, Denny. The, the scene where they first show up and he just rambles away at them in French and the reaction is like, oh, do you speak French? <laughs> no. Okay, neither of us got word of that. So. <laughs> but you know there's going to be a scene where he just breaks out in oh, perfect 100%, English. You know 100%. Yes. 100%. <laughs> and um, he's got to be a vampire, right? He might. Maybe. I mean, Cassidy knows. He's known him. He said he's an yeah. old buddy. And Cassidy's over 100 years old. And so yeah. New maybe. Orleans, known for its voodoo and That weirdness. is true. Yeah. I mean, Anne Rice's yeah. novels were set yeah. in New yeah. Orleans-ish areas. The originals? So. I've yep. seen her yeah. house. <laughs> yep. Uptown. I've seen uh, her house. Uh, True Blood, Anne also, Rice. Louisiana. True so. Blood, yeah. yeah. That's, it's yeah. like the land of vampires, so I wouldn't be surprised. True yes. Detective, weird stuff happens down there, man. Right? That's weird, yeah. All right, so what, I think the real question, what the fans want to know is, what weirdness was happening in that first bar when he said, I want to meet God, and there's a person and a dog, and who is it? Because they focus oh, on the Oh, in the dog suit, yeah. Who is that person? I think we're going to see that dog again. Yeah. That was like a Twin Peaks moment right there. It, <laughs> it really maybe, was. Maybe if you go through and watch that show, maybe you will find God in some form or another. In Twin Peaks? or in, No, in, 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 in Preacher. In Preacher, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love how matter-of-fact they were. He's like, come with me. Yeah. Like they were so like diseased, like, you know, 4,000 yeah. for this, 10,000 for this, whatever. And I was thinking to myself, oh, God, this is such convenient writing that they find God right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Um, that when they actually went down there and they saw that creepy dog, I was mm-hmm. like, that's some, that's some pretty funny stuff. Yep. What? How long do you think we're going to stay in New Orleans? <clears throat> I hope they keep the road trip going. I hope yeah. maybe another episode or two, maybe, then yeah. move on to the next place. I, I yeah. think that they need to and definitely will have at least one more because obviously, like, Tulip's 
ex dude yeah. shows up at the well. I mean, he doesn't show up, but like his thugs show up to like capture her at the right. end. So obviously, we're not leaving New Orleans mm-hmm. like immediately at the beginning of the next episode. But I I do like the sort of forward momentum of the of this season of them going somewhere new every week. So mm-hmm. I hope we won't stay here too long. Is is it weird that he used Genesis, mm-hmm. but Graham McTavish didn't show up? Did you notice that? Because he did it. Yeah. The van stopped. It's a lot of walking. He, he's just walking. He's <laughs> and slow it's true. Walking. He is, and he's not very <laughs> fast. Right. <laughs> but okay. All right. Okay. That's always. It's always. Whenever you watch like Jason, you know those movies, yeah. and you watch, you of course, like this guy's what he's called the Killer of Saints, or the, yes. He, he, like how fast can he walk? Yeah. He's just walking. He's not jogging. He's walking. Well, but still, like. I feel he's, like because he's got the supernatural right, that yeah. maybe he he does like a time warp. Right. You know, he's got he, a great GPS system. He jumps around the pipes. He goes to level four. He misses all the levels boop, two boop, and three. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Collects yeah. some coins. I'm sure. I bet you we'll see him maybe probably next episode. Right. Yeah. Maybe next I episode. was trying to rack my brain the whole episode around the like cold open scene that we got with the mm-hmm. two teenagers and how like obviously we see that the boy he we see him again throughout the episode he's supposed to be in hell now mm-hmm. but like i was like but where are we going with this like mm-hmm. again right. like as you say like this episode was very weird it was like a little twin peaks yeah esque yeah. with and of, the, and of course his neighbor <laughs> is hitler yeah of right of course he's like Who's out there? Like, yeah. of course it's Hitler. It's his neighbor. Of all the well, people he could be next to in hell, write, it's Hitler. But if of you're going to write is. a hell scene in, in a graphic yeah, novel gotta, right. and in a show, yeah. the first person you are going to see in hell it's is gonna Hitler. Be, yeah. It's going to be Hitler. That's even, if, even if Hitler, by far the most evil man of this of the 20th century, sure. along with people like Stalin mm-hmm. and all these people that killed millions and millions of people and had their hands in the killing of millions and millions of people, the, the person that you associate closest with hell is definitely Hitler. The worst part I always think about this is is being the actor cast as Hitler. Yeah, it's, right. not, it's not a glamorous it's role. It's a terrible yeah. And 90% role. of the time, it literally is just a role of convenience to yes. be like, we yeah. are in hell. Like, he's not, a, like, Hitler is rarely starring role. Never. <laughs> Unless it's that movie where he, he, he and everybody makes that funny, uh, like, the funny subtitles. Cody, what's that thing called? You made... Downfall. 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 Where yeah. you make the mm-hmm. setting, like takes his glasses off yeah. and his hands are shaking. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, it's so good. Uh, also, too, whoever the head of that organization is with the guys that wear all the white suits, yeah. that guy is in Poldark. Uh, Whoa. What? I did. Poldark Cody, can, getting work in the States. Can we, for next week, can we get like a Poldark mention buzzer? Yes. Like a, like a flasher? Yeah, he's working on I'm it. I'm going to mention it anytime <laughs> it's relevant. It's I coming did. up. Poldark Cam. Poldark Cam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But. Yeah, I mean, I I liked this episode. I really liked the reveal that like the the sultry jazz singer like wasn't just a blonde bimbo. Like, right. I liked that. Oh, like she's she's in on whatever's going on with the people in the white suits, and right. like they're clearly mm-hmm. looking for Genesis. Because I thought she was God. Uh, yeah, possibly. Yeah, God could be a she. Sure, why not? Right. Why yeah. Not? Why not? My thought was that she was God, mm-hmm. uh, and she had a very Gillian Anderson look to her. She was in Better Call Saul the first season. Remember the couple Saul was helping out? Remember he stole the money full the bag full yeah. of money? Yeah, that was her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Better Call Man, Saul. I am so bad at recognizing actresses sometimes. Yeah. Um, I, I and t- when she took off the wig, I was like, oh, that's who that is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I really enjoyed that whole jazz club scene. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I'm really looking forward to seeing one who that is, because I thought it was God, mm-hmm. but it's some sort of heavenly organization. Sure, it's yeah. gotta be, right? And I'm wondering. Who is Tulip? Because last season, yeah. all Tulip was was pining for Jesse, mm-hmm. kind of convincing him to come back to the dark side, right? Right. He's come back to the dark side. I love the fight with the dudes outside the van because mm-hmm. uh, Jesse Custer, Dominic Cooper, those those fight scenes are so well choreographed. Yeah. And the yeah. use of like quick slow motions here and mm-hmm. there, I really enjoy. It's very uh, Guy Ritchie. Yeah, a lot of it was one extent. take, too, so you yeah. can tell that was actually him in those fight scenes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the problem with Preacher is that it's on Monday, so we yeah, have to I wait know. an entire week to talk yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Again, I I think this, because the last episode was so good, mm-hmm. like this episode wasn't quite as good for me, but I feel like they're setting up something interesting mm-hmm. for tonight's episode, so I'm looking forward to yes. it. Yes, a lot more dynamics in this season, which yes. is, I think, what yes. season, season two of American Much Gods more focused. Will still be like. crazy, still over the top. Oh, but 100%. Much more focused. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, I, I will it. say the scene where she blows the back of her brain out and he's trying to put the brains back in there. Oh. 
That's something. <laughs> yeah, it was just. Ugh. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's yeah. a lot. Okay, next up, <laughs> Snowfall on FX. We've been talking about and waiting for this for a while since the end of Fargo. Really and truly, since the end of Feud mm-hmm. on FX, I've been waiting for Snowfall to come out. I I listen. This is my type of show, so maybe I'm a little jaded. Maybe I'm a little apologetic, and I'm, I mm. see the beauty in everything. But I thought this was a really well done show. I've seen a t- I've seen a ton of documentaries and s- things about this era and the birth of crack and cocaine and and how we were paying for a guerrilla warfare in Central mm. America. But I really enjoyed the pilot. I thought it was really well done, and I thought that the end scene with the father. Uh, you can throw up a spoiler alert, I guess, Cody. I know, but. I thought the end scene with the father was very, very powerful, mm-hmm. and I thought that the development of each character was was really well done in the in the limited amount of time that they had. Yeah, I don't know what you guys thought. I mean, this is not my kind of show at all. Okay. This is not the kind of thing that I gravitate towards. But that being said, I did enjoy it. I found it to be very interesting. I really liked that when the kid who was uh, who was ended up with the kilo of cocaine. Franklin. Franklin, when he was in trouble that like his aunt came and like bailed him out. And like I like again, I I really enjoyed the character dynamics. I thought that the actual history of this time period is it is very interesting, but it's just this is not my kind of show. Okay. But I liked it. Okay. Yeah. I think the show is a mess. Uh, It's a mess, but I enjoyed it. Uh, okay. Parts of it. How would you okay. say it's a mess? Damson in Idris, who's Idris Elba's cousin. No, it's not, not true. <laughs> <laughs> Damson um, Idris. They're not related. Man, you didn't yeah. even believe in the joke. You sold out the joke before <laughs> you even got there. No, they're not related. Um, he is fantastic. He's also British. Oh, well. Uh, Franklin. Franklin's oh, British. He's fa- no, he he's is, wonderful. I, I, I think he's going to be a star. Like He's absolutely. good. He has so much presence on screen. Um, I don't care about the, is he a CIA, FBI agent? Like that guy, I, like that guy already, he's like, I'm 20 years old. I'm like, no, you're not 20 years old, first of yeah, all. Yeah, it's like, like I don't you're care at least 35. You. Yeah, at least 35. <laughs> and I don't care about you. But I do care about these kids in South Central. I want to learn more. But you could make the whole show yeah. off the South Central The guy in the kids. CIA looks like Michael Phelps, does he not? Yeah, with the, uh, more the hair the beard, and the, curly. The, the, yeah. Michael Phelps yeah. says not. But there. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch more of it because of uh, Damson Idris, because of Franklin. He's an interesting character. I want to see what happens to him. Yeah. The rest well, of the stories, I don't know if I care about yet. But the thing the with story. Franklin that I really enjoyed was that I felt like they were portraying him as essentially actually being a good kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's. He was in college. Yeah. In the valley somewhere, yep. but he dropped out. Right. Mm. And that, you know, he doesn't get involved in the partying and like the reason that he is dealing drugs like it's because num- he ends up in a in a crappy mm-hmm. situation and he genuinely is like trying to kind of help out his friend and then he ends up being like oh well I'll just you know front me the kilo and I'll totally sell it and he has really no means of selling it yeah right. I, I the, the problem that I had with the show I mean, I, listen, again, like I said, I'm very apologetic to this kind of stuff. I love shows about the drug culture in the 80s and ni- like 90s, especially in like the West Coast, mm. you know, where we're from, is that this kid was smart. He went to like a privileged school in the Valley and all this kind of stuff. And his mom... His friend called him King of the White Boys. Yeah, can, yeah. like his mom yeah. didn't push him to college and he was bitter and that the system was rigged like dude no it's not yeah you were given every opportunity to not do this like i understand that's like the only problem i had with you this. know what he reminds me of um because you see he's, he's he works at a convenience store at a grocery store you yeah. know to earn a little cash he does some other stuff too to earn cash yep. but he's reading mm-hmm. a book he's still studying even though he's not in school he reminds me of idris elba's character in the wire yeah remember he was going to community Stringer college yeah. he was always yep. trying to better himself learn i mean and i'm watching the show power on stars and that guy too is super bright they're very smart. All those top drug dealers are smart, dude. Yeah. They're not dumb. They just chose to go down a different path. I understand that, yeah. but the way it was like presented was that he's this really nice, good right. kid, and now he like graduates to a kilo mm-hmm. of cocaine. I, I don't know. It, there's, there's, too fast. It's too fast. Yeah. Now, had his buddy, the mm-hmm. idiot friend, been like, hey, I got this, and he ropes his buddy in through some sort of yeah. like, cavalcade of bad decisions, but I, that would make I it. I think that the way they were trying to justify it on the show, though, is kind of encapsulated in that scene in the convenience store where the his friend, the girl, is there, and she's, like, drinking wine out of the bottle, yeah. and he's and she's like, oh, why don't you party? Like, why didn't you just keep going to your fancy Valley College? And he's like, I'm learning to run a business. And I think mm. that that was kind of the idea with him you know, basically bargaining okay, to unload that. the kilos. So that's that's my interpretation of it anyway. But that's his business. I mean, I don't know. 
There's something he's. I'm torn. Well, it's yeah. like this. It's interesting, but there's so many plots going on. Like you have like the yeah. the um, uh, Mexican wrestler guy, and you got his story with him. Oh I'm like, yeah, it's interesting. I feel bad for it. At the same time, I'm like it's just it's so many stories. Like <laughs> right now, I just care about Franklin and his and his story right now. So we'll okay. see if a few episodes later. Yeah, I I think you're right that there are so many stories going on that at this point it's hard to care yeah. about all of them. And I I agree with you on the the Mexican wrestler story where it's like, okay, it's sad, but. Like, I don't really know how you got here. Right. I don't know why you want to be, like, part of this quote-unquote family, yeah. so... It's got a it's got a certain, with that storyline, um, it's got that certain, like, these people are going to have to sell as well. Right. So we know that's coming. Yeah. But it was a weird setup for it. I yeah, agree with just, you. It wasn't, an, it wasn't It's just an oddly paced. If you watch some of the cuts, yeah. it's an oddly... I heard that... Singleton was brought on to direct when they changed directors midway. I heard some stories. So, I mean, it pilot, like if you watch the pilot, it's very choppy. It's not it's Singleton not clean. is not my favorite director, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Like, no. He's got some decent stuff, but... Boys in the Hood, of course. Boys in the Hood is amazing, <laughs> but uh, yeah. after that, I'm not like, oh, my God. Like, John Singleton, in my opinion, made the worst 30 for 30 in the mm-hmm. history of 30 for 30s, and yeah. it was mostly because of editing and directing. Yeah. I don't know, but this I, I will keep watching Snowfall. Yeah. I will I'd keep watching worth, Snowfall, it, I, and because I'm so interested in this. But again, there's a lot of things like you're right. It's yeah. it's a it's kind of a mess a little yeah. bit. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna let you guys right. talk about this next one. Listen, <laughs> I watched two episodes. I I my brain just can't comprehend this kind of animation. It's okay. I I, I actually was thinking about this um, recently. Sorry, real quick, we're gonna talk about Castlevania. Yes, now. we're talking about Castlevania. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I know you had sent that text on our, yeah. our, our TV talk group text that we always have going. Yes. And I understand though where you're coming from because for me, it's like one of the first anime things I can recall ever seeing is Vampire Hunter D, okay. the old eighties movie, Vampire Hunter D. So like for me, Castlevania like struck so many of those notes and I freaking loved it. But my brain was conditioned from a very early age that like not everything that's animated is for kids. Yeah. And that it, and the thing is, I think that in the US we get a lot of conditioning for animated comedies that are aimed at adults, but not so much dramatic series and particularly nothing that is like specifically for adults that isn't just like family friendly. Because obviously you have fantastic series like uh, Avatar or Legend of Korra or the um, Voltron Netflix series, all of which are very accessible to an adult audience, mm-hmm. but they're also like still family friendly you know what i mean and this is not family friendly at all no i mean like uh, it's just it's hard for me to watch this kind of animation because it's kind of like like it just it doesn't equate with my brain it is interesting because so basically castlevania is uh it's animated technically by frederator studios um who have worked on things like being puppy cat and adventure time uh so the thing is is the korean or japanese it no it's Frederator is an American studio, so it's oh, them, and good. I think it's called 51 Productions or something like that, who's worked on a lot of the Rooster Teeth animated stuff. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of sort of co-production going on there, but a lot of the animation was also done by MUA Studios, which is a Korean animation studio. Okay. So okay. that was kind of why it ended up with this, and rightfully so, I think if you are going to animate something even though it is technically an american show Mm -hmm. that is an animated series for an adult audience you want it to have that anime look to it because that immediately clues your brain into the fact that like this may not be for children yeah right which is the way it was set up so some people were complaining that i think if you look at it like you're watching an animated film yes i think it's fine yeah i think i totally agree but some people are like oh it's four episodes and there's a bar scene like people are like oh it's a 10 minute bar scene but i'm like i think as a movie it's perfect. Oh, and yeah. I think even as a series, as four episodes, when it ends, it's not a crazy cliffhanger ending. It's like, no, okay, it's a satisfying you told a complete story. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, okay, now I'm ready for the next eight episodes because it got renewed. Exactly. And, and <laughs> I mean, the thing is, too, is so this project has actually gone through a lot of hands. Like, basically, it was licensed out as a film a long time ago to basically make a mm-hmm. film version of Castlevania Three, which is what this series is based on. Mm-hmm. And it ended up like in limbo for so long and the project got abandoned and uh but but eventually it did and it's always had uh the uh the uh, Warren Ellis who wrote all of this the yeah. episodes he was always slated to write the film and it just kind of like lived in limbo for so long and then finally got picked up to be a Netflix series so this mm-hmm. was originally intended to be a film yeah. and then they expanded it to give it more life 
as a series. Um, which is why it was four episodes. Which now is why getting, it was yeah. four episodes. Now we're gonna exactly. Get eight. Exactly. So Graham and, McTavish is in there. I know. Graham, Graham McTavish, McTavish is right. Come on now. Outlander. I heard the news. Preacher. <laughs> I just Castlevania. Thought, like, I would love to see this as a live action series. My, mm -hmm. Again, I thought that I, I watched the first two episodes and I was like, oh, God, I just, I can't. I can't watch it. Like my, it's just like my brain right. doesn't equate with it. I get it. I get the plot. I get everything. Yeah. But I can't just like can't watch like paper dolls walking and this is the animation. Like I, that, <laughs> it just doesn't work for me. And I don't want to offend it. And that's not what it is. It's just like I want to see this dude who I blew up, grew up playing video games with. Mm -hmm. I want to see him attacking people. And I understand live action is very expensive, but it's freaking Castlevania. Like, you could do it. I, w I will say that I was very excited when I heard that they were making a series of Castlevania because the Castlevania sort of, like, mythology is so interesting and there's mm -hmm. so much room to expand upon it, which they've obviously done in this series. There's a combination of, like, stuff that was in Castlevania three and also a lot of influence, particularly stylistically, from Symphony of the Night. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, and I and I was very surprised when I found out it was animated, to be totally honest, because in my brain I was like, and obviously like I am a person who loves animation, um, and it's kind of surprising to me actually that there hasn't been a, a Japanese anime film or series of Castlevania previously. So I think in, in my brain there was a little bit of a disconnect, even though I really enjoyed it, and I obviously I am a big fan of animation, mm -hmm. and I, I thought that the visuals were really interesting and I loved the writing. I know some people did not care for it, but I thought it was hilarious. Again, super dry. It, it's, it's so but I dry. Loved it though. It's yeah, so it was great. dry. Mm -hmm. And and like just the way that they depicted Trevor Belmont as like this just like sort of useless drunkard mm -hmm. that's like, well, okay, whatever. Like, uh, guys, uh, let me be in charge here because I'm the only one that actually knows how to fight vampires. So like calm down. Like mm -hmm. it was it, it resonated so with honest, me so you, much. You guys enjoyed the four part series. I I re I did. You I got really here is talking Rakuga. Yeah. We loved it. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> Great. I wow. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. But I mean, and wait, what did Sinead say? Uh, Sinead said that she thought it was pretty okay. But like, why are you like, whispering, bro? Yeah. <laughs> is he always whispering in the show? It's Richard Armitage. Yeah, He's it's the Richard Armitage. Guy from Hobbit. Yeah. Uh, and North and South. Got it. Got it. <laughs> oh, and James Callis is in there yeah, from Balthazar Galactica. Balthazar. Uh, Bal uh, Bal Bal yeah, Baltar. 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 Yeah. Okay. Gaius Baltar. Baltar. Yeah. Yeah. Baltar. He's in there. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. cast. Come yeah. on, Makuga. Yeah. Coming in for yeah. eight episodes, season two. Yeah. Coming in hot. Yeah, sometime right. in 2018. Cool, cool. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, for me, for me, I really enjoyed it. As I said, it's I like. I, I, Here's my problem. You know what? I just realized it, and it just came to me. <laughs> is that that kind of animation just looks like human storyboard? So it's like he walked here. And then he, <laughs> and then the rain came down, drew it like a pencil. Like I, it just, I know, I know, I know, and okay. I'm offending you. No, I you're not offending me. <laughs> I, it's okay. I just told you that I don't like shows like Snowfall. Yes. So, and I watched we, that, and I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I will probably not continue to watch it, but yes. I am very excited for Castlevania to come back in 2018 because I really like the way that they're exploring the story. And again, like, I, I the first game I ever played was Symphony of the Night. I was totally an Alucard girl, but, like, I'm all about that Trevor Belmont now. There you go. All right, <laughs> this is why we have variety on TV exactly. Talk. We have different personalities. We have it. That's why we've got Polar. We don't, don't want to be robots. And we don't, no robots in here. Yeah, so. <laughs> but on Castlevania, lots of internal organs. Yeah. Yes. I did that. Well, the, some of those violent scenes were pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, Would have been way cooler if they were human beings. But hey, what are we gonna do? What are you gonna do? All right. <laughs> uh, up next, everybody's favorite portion of the show: Allison Keen via satellite from Atlanta, Georgia. You've got your Collider TV Talk Performer of the Week, Allison. Rip it. Hey, everybody. I'm Collider.com TV editor Allison Keen here with our latest edition of TV Performer of the Week. We're a little in a little bit of a lull before Game of Thrones returns, but that doesn't mean that I'm at a loss for great TV performers. There's a little show on T TNT that just started called Claws, and it stars my pick for this week's best TV performer, Niecy Nash, as a nail salon owner who gets mixed up in the Dixie Mafia's business in South Florida. The show is a little crazy. It's a good summer show, lots of beach scenes and humidity that you can pretty much feel, but it's an example of a series where the talent of its cast surpasses the material they are given. That fantastic, that fantastic cast includes Carrie Preston and Dean Norris. Norris plays a character called Uncle Daddy, if that gives you a hint of the flavor of this show. But it's really just a joy to watch them all interact. But like so many series right now, there's a desire to focus too much in on a murder plot and make that sort of everything, whereas Nash and her co-stars really deserve to shine in great character moments. 
But that's also the thing. Nash, who you may remember from Reno 911, makes it work. First of all, she's wearing these outrageous goddess outfits that are sort of trashy chic, which is the overall aesthetic for the show. And she has this huge hairstyle that I know must be miserable in that heat. But basically her character Desna is torn between her dream of owning her own salon and the nightmare of being trapped within the Dixie Mafia's drug pushing organization where she launders money. She also has a special needs brother at home who she cares for and is responsible for, and she just bears the weight of everyone's problems and everyone's needs. Her character is, in many ways, a comforting earth mother, and at other times she's a sharp businesswoman, but there are also moments when she's stressed and broken and beat down and there is no one that she can turn to. So in this, Nash gives an incredibly affecting performance. She's also really funny. The show was actually originally developed as a comedy for HBO before moving into more of a drama format for TNT. So there's still shades of that in there. And Nash is just working so many different levels of this character. And it really is by sheer will that she is carrying this show on her shoulders. So for all of those reasons and many more, Niecy Nash is my TV performer of the week for Claws. See you next week. All right, Allison Keene, thank you so much. Uh, we love having her on every week, and uh, thank you for always being such a great contributor here on Clatter TV Talk. I don't know why I'm all of a sudden I'm like Mr. Anou- like guy. Eh, <laughs> all right, we're going to do some highs and lows. What's Woo! everybody, everybody ready? We got oh, it yeah. going. Um, there's a ton to get through this week. I will, again, at the end of the show, after we're done with highs and lows, I'll get to your Twitter question, hashtag at Clatter TV Talk, or just at tweet me, at Josh McCuga on Twitter, highs and lows. Here we go. Luke Cage casting Mustafa Shakir and Gabrielle Dennis. Highs and lows. I like uh, Mustafa Shakir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was, um, I, I mean, listen, Luke Cage, the casting has always been spot on. Mm-hmm. It's some of the storytelling that isn't. So well, the I'm, problem uh, is they then also get rid of the best, the guys. best people that they've cast. I don't so. even yeah. knew what they had with Marsha Ali. I and now he blew up with yeah. Moonlight and everything. And, and you know what we haven't talked about, which is totally, we never yeah. talked about Mahersha Ali getting, because that was right oh, for True the pre yeah. three. That's right. True Detective Season 3. And yeah. I tweeted out, listen, you can give me Mahersha Ali, you can give me Brad Pitt. If the story sucks. Yeah, I mean, Season 2 had an yeah. incredible cast. Incredible yeah. cast. But it didn't work, so no. yeah, I need yeah. more in a cast. But I will story. say that Mahersha Ali makes me want to give it a chance because I am such a fan of his work. Correct, 100%. So, But highs on these? Yes. Yeah, classic. absolutely. Yes. All right. Up next, we've got our th- first three Game of Thrones episode titles and synopsis revealed. Spoiler. No, there's spoiler. no spoiler. There's, there's no, no spoiler. spoiler. Yeah. Dragons. Uh, Jamie. Of one of them, I think, is Jamie confronts enemies. I'm like, yeah. oh, oh, shit. Oh, that's yeah. the series. That's right, yeah. never right. happened right. on Game of Thrones before. Yeah. I am astounded. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, the only one thing I will say, the only thing that it does give is is it says, uh, in episode one, Danny returns home, mm-hmm. meaning... Maybe the first episode is in Westeros, or that's Dragonstone. Yeah. Because mm. the episode is called Dragonstone. True. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe and we Dragonstone. see her walking in the, with that throne room. Well, I mean, room Westeros and... is, the, is the country, and yeah. Dragonstone, Dragonstone is in Westeros. In Westeros. Westeros. Yeah, so. it's part of Westeros. It's the same. Again, this is why I don't host the Game of Thrones. Show, right? <laughs> I just host TV Talk. I like, my st- I like watching the show. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Up okay, next. Okay, like, I, got, I got a cackle out of Adam. Mm. There we go. We know we're doing it. All right, up next. Yeah, next week, uh, last week, Netflix, I just saw, like, there must have been 40 new shows on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't all original stuff, obviously. It was some BBC stuff. It was some stuff from Australia. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I started clicking around. There's a Okja. ton of, there's Okja. Okja. No, there's, there's uh, like, a bunch of half hours. There's some yeah. new comedies. There's some new dramas from I Australia. Seen, I, never, I haven't seen a Lion yet. No, it's a movie, but I haven't seen Lion. Yeah, that's Dead how, Patel. I want to oh, see man. Lion. That's yeah. You want to yeah. cry like I a baby. Star, watch yeah, Lion. Yeah, I heard it's So that. I'm giving that a high because now yeah. Netflix. Netflix just keep piling it on. I don't like the new rating system. Talk to me about the rating system. Well, we used to have stars. Now we have thumbs up, thumbs down. Well, I, what is, I mean, because there's some things I want to give like it's a, binary a three system, David. Yeah. It's a one, or a zero. two. It's like, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love, I didn't love it. You know, it's not I want thumbs up, thumbs yeah, down. It's, I hate that too. That's the way that they rate games on Steam also. And so, but it is, it's frustrating because you're like, oh, you know, 67 percent of people gave this a positive rating but at least it's like, on steam you can oh, see people's like thoughts that is true. they can write you can their at least thoughts, see their yeah. thoughts but on but on netflix you can't but it is yeah. it's so frustrating because it's like as you say well but it's kind of like what we're doing right now yeah so i'm giving that netflix thumbs, thumbs down, down. Oh, boom. Boom. Love. Boom. all right uh <laughs> real quick orphan black me and the fiance said it the other night I love this show, and I'm so confused about how it's going to end. Mm-hmm. I, like this last season, it feels like, like I was saying with with Netflix, you climb out, of, you, you, it's like the 
you turn out of the butter, you make your way to the top, and then they throw a pancake on your head, mm -hmm. right? Turn your way out of the butter, they throw a waffle on your head. Orphan Black, it's like, are we going to get to somewhere? They're like introducing new characters. I'm like, this is the last season. Mm -hmm. Wrap it up. There's 35 clones. Regardless, it's, it's great. <laughs> Black. All right, up next. Yes. Uh, our resident Doctor Who fan. I had a moment with Doctor Who where I was like, I was like, did I talk about the finale already? I should have. I forgot. It aired on the first, and we didn't tape an episode. We pre-taped. So we have not, since we've taped an episode, had a moment to talk mm -hmm. about this. But it was the uh, season finale of this season of Doctor Who, mm -hmm. uh, which is Peter Capaldi's last episode as the Doctor. However, he will be in the Christmas special. Uh, I I really liked it. I, I've enjoyed this season overall. I think that Bill has been a great companion. Uh, if I get a little spoiler yeah, warning. Yeah, throw it up there. Uh, I am not sure now what her status is going to be. It mm. seems like she's probably just going to roam around space with her liquid girlfriend, who we met in the first episode, who I have a came liquid back. Girlfriend. Her and, name is Jack uh, Daniels. And uh, rescued her from being a Cyberman. Uh, the, <laughs> the stuff of the Cybermen is, uh, has always been really frightening to me mm. because they're kind of like robot zombies. Like they I assimilate. thought you said Cybermen like they were Jewish robots. Like D so David what? Cyberman. Cybermen. Right, Cybermen. <laughs> Cybermen. <Yeah. laughs> uh, no, Cybermen. Uh, yeah, they, they've always been really scary to me. And so, like, Bill got turned into a Cyberman, which was really terrifying uh -huh. because it's like there's no way to come back from that because they literally, like, chop up your whole body. And like the Borg in, in Star Trek? In a robot Trek? body. Yeah, like kind of, kind of. And you are supposed to have, like, that, like, assimilated, like, group mind mm -hmm. thing. But Bill was able to rebel against it because she had had this connection with the pilot, the otherworldly girlfriend character. So, so high or low on the finale? It was of... high, yeah. I, re I really enjoyed it. And uh, we're getting the uh, fake William Hartnell doctor in the Christmas special, which I'm really, really excited about. Boom. Ira Cyberman. There's nothing that my America does do. They don't do Christmas specials yeah, or holiday specials. That's true. Downton Abbey, every year Downton Abbey, you get your normal episodes what? and you get a big hour. I mean, they do them, but they don't do them like they do in Britain. Come on. Yeah. Because in Britain, it's not like a special. It's like it's actually part of the story. God it continues yeah. the oh, yeah. story. It's like a bonus episode. Yeah. Well, it's not and, like, and in this case, if you miss the Christmas episode, so what, you're are you saying that Britain likes Christmas more than America? They do. I guess Nobody so. likes Christmas more than America. <laughs> no, but, I, but if you skip a Christmas special, like in Doctor Who, particularly this one, like you're gonna miss Peter yeah. Capaldi's regeneration. It's like you're they, missing. It's like a second finale. They still haven't. Ca they still haven't announced who's been cast as his replacement. But there's gonna be a Christmas special with both him and David Bradley, who plays Walter Frey, playing the William Hartnell version right. of the Doctor, who was the very first Doctor, and. He was amazing in an adventure in time and space, what's, so I'm stoked. What's Walter Frey's character's name in the Harry Potter series? Oh, uh, uh, Filch. Filch. There we go. <laughs> Bang. Mm -hmm. He All was right. in... No, never mind. I'm what? Go ahead. He was Wait. also in... In Poldark? Was he in Broadchurch? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> just <laughs> tweeted he, that. He was in Broadchurch like, <laughs> season one, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He was actually. in Broadchurch, He was the, yeah. the newsstand yeah, guy. Yeah, that's right. Uh, somebody tweeted me, Amy Awesome. Who tweets Aww. quite regularly? I like Amy her. Awesome. She's awesome. Yeah, Josh fan. Hashtag Clatter TV. Josh McCougar. Are you ever going to let David Griffin, or Griffin De, talk about Pole Dark? It's a beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful series. Yeah, and then Amy. she posted. Yes. She posted yes. a gif of a shirtless man punching flowers. Like that's going to get me to watch Pole Dark. He's working the fields. He's got to <laughs> feed his family. <laughs> What do you do? Is Jack? You can't, no you can't man, go to Rouse and get no, a loaf of bread. No man in the history of, of 18th century looked like this. That is that dude is doing CrossFit. Um, if you that watch, is not if what you watch people look like. British television, according to British television, that is what they all look yeah, like. They all look yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> now we know why David is watching British TV. Dudes and pecs punching flowers. Uh, all right. That's a man's man. It's a man's man. Paul Dark is a man's man. Okay. Uh, up next, Defiant Ones. This is the highest of yes. highs for me. Yeah, this was so, so worth the wait. Uh, I four part series, much deserved. I only watched the first part, but I'm going to binge the next because you can watch them all on HBO Go right now. Oh, all available. Uh, just incredible, Dr. Dre, Jimmy Ivine, um, their partnership, and everybody talking about him and his career, and mm. you know, it makes you want to kind of be back in the '70s in New York when crazy things were kind of possible. Nowadays, it's kind of like... You know what crazy me out? There was a part, they showed Jimmy Alvin, and he's got a brand new apartment in Manhattan. Dre comes into this huge place overlooking Central Park, which is ridiculous. He points across the way and said, Dre, I used to live there when I was 23 years old back in the 70s, and he paid 1400 a month in the 70s. In the 70s. Ooh. Overlooking Central Park at 23 years Ooh. old. That is... Ouch. That place must have been huge. Yeah. I mean, and at 20, back then, back in, in the, the 70s, 70s so that's like $45,000. Yeah, today. 23 years old because he's doing the Bruce Springsteen. I mean, you got to watch yeah. it. It's so good. Awesome. Yeah. Defiant one, super high. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Here comes Emma's yes. Anime Academia. I know. My Hero hey, Academia. Crush it. Great. It was so good. Uh, they're all doing their hero internships now. So we met Gran Torino, <laughs> who was All Might's uh, homeroom teacher when he was in school. Hero Academia. Does Gran Torino, is, is, is he like funny. a race car driver? Uh, no, he's like a weird little Mega Man kind of dude. Oh. He's a Cyberman? Uh, uh, no, he's he's not. Oh. He's a person. Um, not a robot. But, uh, but no. yeah, uh, uh, Midoriya is learning to use the All Might better, and he learns a really... Or so the how one many for, episodes the one for all. in a season? of a My Hero. Uh, my Hero. The first season was 13 episodes, okay. I want to say, and now this is the 14th episode. I added of this it to my season, queue so. on, on Hulu. I it's added it, yeah, it's a really, really it. cute show. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and and uh, Midoriya learned a lesson from Frozen Taiyaki. It was a high. <laughs> high. <laughs> Boom. David, this is a low for me. The next one. What is it? Uh -oh. uh, the Nick, season three, they told us what the yeah. idea would be. Mm -hmm. It would be post World War II, black and white. And we'll never see it. No. It could have been amazing. Mm -hmm. the, the fact that, that Soderbergh said that he was going to do two seasons in one period, another two seasons, and then a whole new look, whole new cast, everything, and then two more seasons. He wanted to be six seasons, three anthology set they over should, They should have put the show on HBO. Oh, my God. It's, it's, just put it on Can you HBO. imagine a black and white series post-World War II in a hospital, like, figuring out? You should watch. You should go back and watch the next. The next on Soderbergh Soderberg directs every episode. It's so gorgeous. It's, oh, awesome. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. It's a low mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, Such it's a, a low that we're not going to see it. We're never going to see it. Yeah, maybe, uh -huh. maybe, maybe we should just start a Kickstarter, and it's called. We'll just kickstart it ourselves. It's, well, we kickstart, and what it does is it funds us for three weeks to sit outside of Soderbergh's house and be like, "Hey, <laughs> tell us, us, tell <laughs> us your vision. Just tell us your vision, and then if we could like reenact all of the Nick episodes mm -hmm. with us as the cast Perfect. members, get a cat, get a thing going, yeah. and then we hang out like with Soderbergh for a few Sounds weeks. Sounds good to I'm me. In. Make yeah. a bunch of Nicks. Yeah. Sign me up. So I'm down. Done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, take me into some Twin Peaks. Oh, Emma, yes. Twin Peaks in it. Well, Twin Peaks oh. found its plot. Well, wait. I, <laughs> wait, I didn't get a chance. I was kind of, I didn't get a chance oh. to watch last night's episode. Oh, okay. no. It was really I'm good. Up, just it, was, okay. it was really good. Um Super high. so because especially because like the last episode, and I enjoyed that last episode, which was now two weeks ago. The origin story. Yeah, of yeah. Bob, which because there wasn't one Fourth of July weekend, mm -hmm. but um I mean that episode was weird. It was it was out there. It was a lot of like what is going on. This episode is very, very different from that. Okay. It was much more plot heavy. Um, you found out like some connections as to why we got that murder story in the very first episode oh, with okay. the woman Ruth, and then the body of that other guy. Like they're starting I to heard put some Tim of the pieces Roth together. Is in this episode. Yeah, that's a great yeah, cast. It's there really it, Roth, this. Yeah. The, Seems like it Twin was, Peaks is just ripping out. They're throwing big actors. Oh, like yeah, every episode, yeah. just like oh, Laura Dern. Oh, is yeah. like throwing big and actors. And Laura Dern is great. Belushi's in an episode. Yep. Yep. Which one's alive? Jim. Jim. Jim Jim. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, definite high, definite high. Yeah. It linked everything together and in a way, like back to the original series, too, it, it was great. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, it was really it good. Yeah. And I believe a couple of you guys will be covering a little bit of Twin Peaks at San Diego Comic Con. Just yeah, I'm sure. Yep. yep. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's let's rip these. We got to go. We oh, want yeah. to get to some Twitter questions. Uh, I watched the gong show. That was the lowest of lows. I felt what? bad for my TV and my remote. You didn't Amanda say, why are you watching this? Yes. I was like, I, maybe I'll give Mike Myers a little bit mm -hmm. of a. It was just horrendous. Yeah. I, I, there was no, it is very terrible. Low. Uh, Vice Principal, we got a season two <clears> teaser <throat> for Vice Principals. I know I'm the only one that watches it, but it's a high. It's The show is so weird. I have no idea yeah, where Kirby it's going. Kirby Enthusiasm teaser. HBO released a lot of little teasers. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, are we didn't, well, that's coming up. Oh, sorry. I don't have uh, to see the list. Tour, <laughs> tour the Pharmacy. First of all, they should, oh, they got to yes. do. They got to do more sports f mockumentaries. Oh my because God. Tour it de Pharmacy. Phenomenal. I laughed out loud. 11 to 12 times in it, like 50 minutes of TV. Mm -hmm. It is so funny. These Andy Samberg mini fake sports documentaries. This was about Tour de France. It's unbelievable. Yeah. John Cena. John Cena is, he is the next rock. He's the he's next funny. rock. He's yeah. a funny guy. Yeah. Yeah, Ersen's train dude. wreck. Yeah. Super high. Yeah. Watch Tour de Pharmacy. You guys need to watch it too. You'll love it. Yeah, I'm going to watch it tonight. Speaking probably. of David, next up. Uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. We've got a small yeah. little teaser. Mm -hmm. October 1st premiere. Yeah. Day after there my wedding. Is. Um, I'm oh. I'm pumped. Yeah. Super high. Super high. Definitely. Big high. The the Deuce trailer. Uh this yeah. is this is a low for me. A low. You didn't like the trailer? First of all, James Franco cannot act. Oh, sorry, you don't like Frank. <laughs> you forget you don't like Franco. That's right. The dude says the opening line is so bro. Still <laughs> still betting. <laughs> yeah. I'm winning. I'm like, are you in this seventh grade play? Like, <laughs> come on, kids, we're still betting because betting makes us the monies. Like, it is so bad. And then, all of a sudden, 
The show has like 19 different plots. We were talking about Snowfall. The Deuce trailer is like, is it porn? Is it the mob? Is it the black mafia? Is it Harlem drugs? Is it more porn? Is it's it Maggie, everything. Is it Maggie Gyllenhaal as Melissa Leo? I don't know what the show is. And the fact that James Franco plays. So I have to see James Franco as two people? I don't want to see him as one person. <laughs> I'm still going to watch it. But David this is, Simon. But this is Vinyl 2. Is this Vinyl Part 2? What is, there's no, first of all, there's nothing wrong with Vinyl Part 2. Do not listen to Makuga. Vinyl Part 2 would be excellent. This will be good. I, if I could, if I had the old Netflix rating system, yes. I would give this like a three because I feel neutral. That's fair. Neutral. That's neutral. fair. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. My thumb is going, it's like the gravity is pulling on it. <laughs> oh just going God. like that. All right. Uh, real quick, Jeopardy. Last week, I went five for five on Final Jeopardy. It's no big deal. Great. Uh, you guys want to tweet at Jeopardy? Tell me you want me to be the host? That's cool. All right. <laughs> We're not a new fan of the ne Netflix. We already <laughs> did that. Uh, this Hawaii Five-O drama, I just read something about this. It's kind of crazy. Well, it's interesting. It's like, of course, when it came out, it's this big story about yes. race and all that. But then you have... We, we, first of all, we're not at the negotiation table. We don't yeah. know exactly what's going on. The CBS executive said no. the deal was more than fair. They're making a lot more money than we're making, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously you want to see equality. But, I mean, there is star power. And some of those actors, I mean, uh, Michael uh, uh, son from Godfather, his con, James Con James son, yeah. is, he's not a Scott big star. Con. But Scott con. I assume right. if he gets paid more, Literally and he's, Scott he's, con more, like he's been four. in Ocean's Eleven. He's done yeah. more things. I would have If I was on set with him and we had like kind of the same role and he got paid more than me, I'd be like, yeah, that it's makes sense. Scott he has, he's Scott Conn. His dad's James Conn. His dad was in The Godfather. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. I feel bad that they had to it's, leave the it's, show. I feel it's bad crazy. It's, the show. It really is, uh, you know, obviously we're for total equality on this set. Because Kim's awesome from the from Lost. Yes. Um, what's her name? Played Boomer on Battlestar Galactica. She's oh, fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I feel I don't want anybody not have a job, so I feel bad that they had to leave the show. I don't, you know, yeah. I wish I could still work. I, it is, and it is really frustrating that, unfortunately, that is what has to happen is they have to leave the show or nothing is ever going to change. You know what right, I mean? So right. I, I, yeah, it's uh it is even, you know, you know, big, sorry, I'm okay. You know, no. big bang theory, they did some negotiations in big bang theory. Now granted, most of the cast uh, is white, right. uh, of course, for a character or two, but uh, they made a deal where the big bang theory cast is making like a million an episode, the top three, mm -hmm. the top three stars, but then they all took a hundred thousand dollars less to give $100,000 more to their supporting cast. That's I mean, awesome. It's not every show. It's not just Hawaii Five-0. I mean, no. there's, there's, oh, it's no. not. Look how generous the Big Bang Theory people are. $100,000 off I, $40 million? I, I know. Oh, I know. you guys are really just it's generous. Tough life. It is. It is Give a tough life. But, I, but I agree with you, David, you know, that it does show the spirit of teamwork, which yeah. is a good thing. So, All right. yeah. All right. Finally. In highs and lows, it's been a, we've been. I'm sweating it out over here. <laughs> Riverdale went from 13 to 22 episodes. No! Boo! Boo! No! I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> I wasn't as into it, I think, as you guys were. So I think with this, I'm, that's enough. Done. I loved it, but I think that a good part of the reason that I enjoyed 13. it so much was mm -hmm. because it was 13 episodes. So yep. they had to do really tight storytelling. And now they're just going to get to flounder around for like 10 episodes. There's going to be like a standalone B episode. Show. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No. All right, that's it. Highs and lows. You guys heard it here first. Woo. We're the greatest show about TV <laughs> on the internet. That's right. <laughs> Into some Twitter questions. You guys have been tweeting at us. Uh, a lot of people have been saying uh, a couple. I mean, you guys have been sending in some great tweets that I won't be able to read, but thank you for sending them in anyhow. Starting with Rax at K Zoom Man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go like Cyberman at K Zooman. <laughs> Uh, would you like to see Harry Potter rebooted as a TV show on HBO? The movies didn't cover the whole books. I'm going to go with a no on that. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of Harry Potter, but I'm also going to kind of go no on that. I like the movies fine. I prefer the books, and nothing's ever going to be the books. Nope. So I'm, I would I'm mention like a future story so set I'm, in the world. Right. Not a reboot, though. I don't want to see a reboot. Yeah, or yeah. like a, or, or like a <clears throat> spin-off series that takes right. place within the Wizarding World, because mm -hmm. obviously J.K. Rowling cool. has created this very interesting universe, so yeah. sure to I'd that. I'd love to see like a no. legal drama about auras. Yeah, That'd be I would kind watch of cool. that. Like, like law oh, and aura? Like a... Like a oh, oh, snap! Oh. Woo. Spoiler it! Spoiler it! Yes! Oh. Yes! That is Woo. huge. Dunk, 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 dunk. Law and Aura. <laughs> Law yeah, and yeah. Aura. Dum, 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 dum. Uh, you know what? Forget about it. Somebody Twitter tweet JK over. that show right now. Tweeter. TV talk is over. Yeah. David Griffin, <laughs> Sir Paul Dark himself, just dropped the I literal do. scythe. <laughs> what do they use on the flowers? The scythe. scythe. The scythe. 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 That's David Griffin. That's what Griffin. using. A ripped David Griffin just punching <laughs> flowers. Just punching flowers. All right. Let's do uh, two more Twitter questions here. Uh, Chris, Chrysia Sisson. 
at Ms. Benth. Miss Absent Minded. Ooh, that is small. Wow. Sorry right? about that. Uh, which movie director would you like to see make their own TV show? I vote Edgar Wright. Uh, yeah. If you watch oh, Space, yeah. 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 Space was an amazing show. It that was, was all Edgar Wright. Um, an amazing yeah. show. I would I would totally see an Edgar Wright movie. I, I first of all, Baby Driver was awesome. Mm-hmm. I would I would go watch that movie in the theater again. I haven't said that about a lot of movies. Um, I mean, of course, we always mention Tarantino. I don't know if he'll ever do it, but I'd love yeah, his TV. Yeah, I would have said Scott Derrickson, but he's doing Snowpiercer, so yes. mm-hmm. it yeah. seems like a lot of people are. I no. mean, I obviously like to support lady directors and I loved what Patty Jenkins did with Wonder Woman yeah. but I think that like cause she'd have to have like an HBO like big budget mm-hmm. kind of like yeah. show mm-hmm. I would love to see I know this is kind of a little out of, but Sofia Coppola I really love yeah. Lost in Translation and she's done some good movies since but not. I would love to see her do like a real slice of life indie kind of well and especially TV because show. you know like her latest project is The Beguiled and so like I, and again, that's more of a like small indie film. So I think she could do a really interesting TV series. Yes. No, I agree. Uh, okay. Finally, from Jedi Dimf, Jedi DMF. Is that a, oh Disney Marvel <laughs> fan? I get it there at Disney Marvel <laughs> fan. Jedi Dimf. Uh, <laughs> this guy's crushing it. At Josh McCuga. What do you? What shows do you hope get a nomination for the Emmys? Um, I'm a huge fan, obviously, of Feud. I love that whole yep. series. I thought that was amazing. I hope both Susan Sarandon and Jessica Lange get nominated. Taboo. I, oh, Taboo, I think, should mm-hmm. get nominated. Uh, We're talking total shows. You know... Obviously, this is a, this is like a weird Emmy season because a lot of shows that were up for it aren't. I, I would imagine this is us should and would mm-hmm. get sure, an Emmy sure. nomination. I don't know if any of the actors will, but I think the mm-hmm. show as Definitely. a whole, like for an mm-hmm. ensemble cast, yeah. will. I'd love to see. Is Atlanta? Is Atlanta up for it? Or were they up for the last Emmys? Atlanta's up, but they can do both though. Remember how it works? It depends mm-hmm. on when the episodes air. They can be on both. Right. Yeah, you never know how that right. works. Yeah, uh, would so, love to. I would mm-hmm. honestly love to see Bojack Horseman get a nomination because I thought that was a really, really amazing, show. yeah, yeah, really amazing season of TV. I really hope. It, the problem is, is that Glow came out. It's too late. It's too, too late. late. Yeah. So Glow would have to go to next. Season. I'm sure the right. Crown will be up again. Crown, oh, the, the Crown will be up sure. another time yeah. again. Yeah, yeah it'll be I up think, again. Yeah. Um. I, and now I'm like I'm I'm unsure of like what is old or new enough for I mean for me like obviously I want Handmaid's Tale to get nominated yeah, I, I don't I know that I think the series will I definitely think some of the actors will mm. um, Downward Dog Best Animal Show Yeah I mean you know Leftovers <laughs> Yeah you would hope I hope the Especially leftovers. now I that it's, so. it's it's, it's was final, its final yeah. season Yeah um, I, I think that one also will for sure get some actor nominations but I'm not yeah. 100% sure the series will get nominated even though I feel very strongly mm. that it should be Um I'd like to see some stuff for Legion. Yeah. I really enjoyed yeah. Legion. Yeah. Maybe like really? Best Director, maybe yeah. for an episode. For yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. yeah. All right. Uh, that's it for, well, here, we'll do one more. This one okay. comes from Luis A. De La Pena at Luis D. P79. Mm-hmm. Hashtag a Clatter TV Talk. Amazing jo- job, guys. Thank you. If you mm-hmm. could participate in a reality TV show, which one would it be? Mine is Big Brother. Uh, mine is clearly Big uh, Brother. Deal or no deal. It's the easiest one. <laughs> you just pick cases. Uh, I think I would crush it. Well, Sinead had her entourage here, family and friends and yeah. everything last week, yeah. said that I should be in The Bachelor. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Or The Bachelorette. The Bachelorette. Bachelor. David, you're sitting Bachelor. on a fortune of two years worth of fame. You got Bachelor. If you don't win, you go Bachelor in Paradise. Then you do public appearances. <laughs> then you get a podcast. Then you marry a girl you probably don't want to marry. You get divorced. It's a celebrity divorce. You yeah. get a bunch of sponsorships. Then you got a ton of Instagram followers. You can do public posting. Three years later, you're back here doing TV talk. Yep. All that in three years? Three years. Yep. I'm not going to handle That's too much stress. I'm not going to handle that. <laughs> as long, I, I just want to sit at home, relax on a nice Sunday evening with a glass of wine and watch yeah. some pole dog. That's all I ask, no, Josh. People- I'm not a complicated man. <laughs> Now, a lot of people are like, Josh, wouldn't you want to be on Jeopardy? Yeah. No, I want to be the host of Jeopardy. Yeah. Right. I would get crushed on British literature, or like American literature, like history, famous sure. people throughout time. If it's sports Jeopardy, Mark Ellis and I would go toe-to-toe, and I would win. But uh, I feel yeah. like for me, uh, I would want to be on... Cause I, I, but again, it's like I always wanted to like host one of those home improvement shows. You know what Ooh, I mean? Like a uh, like a changing house rooms, hunters. like oh, yeah, uh, like a, a trading spaces. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah, your name on the makeover. Food Network? Uh, <clears throat> Semi homemade. Barefoot Contessa. Oh, yeah, semi homemade. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like I, that's like no, I. But Emma's not barefoot. Barefoot Contessa's too. No, no. She's like, I, no, I'm, I'm in East Hampton. She's like no. Me, I'm too like me, I'm like I, I make regular stuff. Like, but I make regular stuff a little better than everybody else. You know, make stuff a little. I make stuff a little better than everybody else. Just regular stuff. 
not fancy stuff. I'm watching your show. I'm going to watch that. All right. That is it. Before we get out of here, it's time for Hit It, Emma. The pick of the week. David Griffin. Let's hear it. The Pole Dark spinoff. Shoulder. So it's I'm about a guy about, that wears shoulders. I'm talking about a show called Home Fires. If you're flipping through Amazon Prime, you might see Home Fries. It's not Home Fries. It's not about potatoes. It's about Home Fires. It's about these. Look at those wonderful ladies. So it's a British show about <laughs> jarring. It's about jam. The whole thing no. is just about making preserves. No, no. Well, no. They, they need a preserve to help fund resources for the war. So uh, it's World War II. It's World War II. And it's so not, a bake it's not, sale for the troops? Yeah, bake sale for the troops. It's not about what's going on, you know, on the front. It's about going what's going on back home, since, hence the word home fires. Got it. So these ladies have to basically keep their communities going. Ooh. And all the struggles and turmoil, and they have, of course, sons and, and husbands that go away. And they have to, it's all about the ladies. It's a very empowering show for women. I sound really, I'm interested. You should home watch show. it. Yeah, now I'll it's watch this. home fires on the hearth, home fires of putting fires away, and home fires of the heart, like girls are being torn by men that didn't go to war like I can't cheat on my husband but I love him so yeah, much yeah that happens too like there's this one woman who's like yeah. uh, who has like this like yeah. really good looking pilot stay with her and Great. of course she's tempted you know but oh, yeah. it, it's a good show nice I love a good British home fire night home fire like a little British <laughs> yeah. home fire not home fire British home fire <laughs> Yeah. Guys, go out there, watch a little home fires while you're eating some home fries. That's how you do it here on Collider TV Talk. That's it for us here on a Monday. Huge, huge announcement next Monday. Really, really excited about it. You all should be excited. Thanks for all your tweets. Thanks for all the love. Thanks for all the pole darkiness. Before we get out of here, David, Saskatchewan Griffin the 13th. Where can the good people find you on the internet? So I'm going to be probably flying back to Scotland, maybe go to Edinburgh. I'm going to be meeting Ooh. up with JK herself. We're going to do a pitch, you know, <laughs> law and aura. So basically now we got to go through the casting process. Mark Ellis is my first pick oh. as a lead aura Woo. in the Harry Potter back there, Mark Ellis. So uh, dun, dun. No, you can dun, find dun. me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Griffin D. Is it weird that I thought of love and aura as a, like a, um, a uh, like a bachelor show for yeah. auras? Yeah. Love and Aura Law. We have the Harry order. Potter like Network it, just like all it. set, man. We got a whole lineup set. HPN, the Harry Potter <laughs> Network. <laughs> Emma Fife, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Emma Fife. Uh, if you guys want to hang out and play video games with me, I do that on Tuesdays over at twitch.tv slash hyperrpg starting at 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. We will be checking out the Final Fantasy twelve remaster, which comes out tomorrow. So I am very excited. Boom, shakalaka. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. Guys, tonight airs the first uh, WGN America, WGN Movies for America. I'm the host on it. We're doing Batman. Uh, I'm on your TV all night long. Starts uh, 7, 6 central. So check it out. Thank you guys as always for watching Collider TV Talk. We'll be back next Monday right here, 2 p.m. PST. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.